Hey guys, it's Matt Hannum here and welcome to the Amplify Your Business podcast. All right. Welcome, we're Matt Hannum here and this is uh, the Amplify Your Business podcast and part of my little game changer Lombok series. I have Marcel Audicio with me here and I just nailed the name and I'm... <laughs> Really impressed with myself. You are, uh, I'm, I'm impressed uh, too. Oh, I'm, I'm really glad that you've joined us. And <laughs> um, we're just jumping out and grabbing a few stories of, of entrepreneurs, yeah. business coaches, people that are in the in the place. And because I, I think it's just a, we've had a magic um, few days full mm-hmm. of some amazing people, and I'd love to share it with um, our audience. So beautiful. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. So, I mean, who are you, and and what do you do? This is a really interesting question. I've been here for three days in Lombok, and this I've been asked this three times. Three, is that it? Who am I? Which is, and what do you, what do you, how do you answer that? So, uh, who am I? I'm, I'm, I'm different versions. I've realised I'm different versions of, of myself. In, in the right way. <laughs> in the right way. Um, what I realised after being asked that question um, a few times this week is. It's really allowed me just to step into that, really step into that question and go, who actually am I? Am I Marcel the coach at the Game Changers? Am I Marcel who has lived a life of her own journey through her ups and downs and the entrepreneurial journey? So it's a really fascinating story. And I think what I came to um, when I was, I had a really great conversation with um, Papa Peak last night over over a beer and uh, (laughs) I was having a chat. And what was really fascinating is this, um, I've really stepped into this space where I, I am really trying getting to know myself. My getting to my, know myself, not only through my own experiences, which is about being more empowered, being more grounded as a woman, yep. um, but really um, embracing the experience of being, you know, um, around so many like-minded uh, business owners and just seeing that I can really be, add, add so much value to them through my, what I've experienced in my life, um, everything that I've learned in terms of human behaviour, and more importantly, how I can support their growth in, in their journey. So who am I? I'm, I'm Marcel, I'm 36, and um, I, ha- I am really stepping into a place of enjoying the journey of life more, I have Love to say. It. Okay. Yeah. So- you're Marcel, you're 36. Yes. You're a, you're a coach for the Game Changers, which yes. is... slash integrator. Slash, sorry, slash integrator. Yes. Um, basically, obviously, a, empowering entrepreneurs yes. in their journeys. But maybe take me on a, a bit of a long or short or mm. mid-range version of how we sort of chronologically uh, sort of achieved that, uh, the current position that current you're position, in. Current position, yeah. Did you, you know, what, what's your background and, and how, did, how did you sort of move through... Um, a few different things that you've done, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. Look, a lot, as many um, entrepreneurs or business people, we do start from a place of corporate world. <laughs> and um, and we soon realise that maybe this is not for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, not, but, was it soon or is uh, it... Does it, take, it, it took a little a while, longer, actually. <laughs> yeah, look, it was interesting because I, my corporate journey, um, it, it actually gave me a lot of that foundation. And what I mean by that is it allowed me to actually see how the big wigs do it. Mm. And with the roles that I attained through that time, I I came from being, um, first of all, I've been a trainer facilitator, I've been a team leader, I've been an integration manager, um, I've been the risk education manager for a bank. So I've attained lots lots of roles. And I think through that, I was able to really look at how I can work with people Mm. and lead, um, how I can empower them and take accountability. Um, so that really helped with my cultural um, side of things, which okay. was amazing. Um, I was able to embed lots of processes and systems and and um, ways that we can actually do more things more effectively and efficiently. Um, I always had these these two rules in corporate life. It was always um, model someone who's doing it better than you and say yes to opportunities. So right. by doing those two things, I learned very quickly that if I modelled and got and attained mentors through my my corporate journey, I was able to really quickly realise where my where my opportunities were, which people say gaps or weaknesses, but yeah. I call them opportunities. And I learnt quickly, and I stepped into that space, and I went through that that period of my life very quickly. And 
what's really fascinating is um, I got to the stage where I had all these skill sets, but I was a master of really nothing. Like it was really interesting, right? And then I thought to myself, okay, do I actually want to be working in this corporate environment, right? So then I started to open up the channels of what, is, what else is there. And I then realised that I wanted to do consulting. I wanted to be able to go in and ha like take all my skill sets and go into an organisation and help improve businesses, help them um, grow, become more efficient. And over the whole banner that I, that I really focused on for a period of time after my corporate life was to improve customer experience and people experience in businesses. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a big chunk of um, what I did. And I did that for four years and I travelled around Australia doing that for many sized businesses, but mainly large to enterprise level. And it was just um, fascinating to, to go into that, that journey. During that time, I actually also suffered from very severe depression okay. through my own personal journey of what was going on. And uh, <laughs> nothing gets me down in life because I'm a bit of a, I've got a lot of courage and a bit of a fighter. But what I realised is when I went through that depression, I went through that, that stage where I was, you know, I was needing to, to seek support and take on some, um, you know, get medication and go down a journey that allowed me to find out more about what is it that's going on. Mm -hmm. I then immersed myself into human behaviour. So I, uh, you know, you hit rock bottom, you start to rebuild, but I literally went, okay. Well, you start searching. Right? You search. You start looking for answers, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Understand why am I thinking this? Why am I behaving this way? How can I, how can I move from a place that I'm at to a better place? So you've got one part of me, which is doing the customer experience, going through systemizing businesses, doing all this amazing things, meeting amazing people. And then you've got the other part of me that's coping with the mental illness, mm. the mental, mental health at side of things time. at the same time, mm. right? So, but I was very much supported and, and I was very much, um, the, con the, the consultancy was amazing because it gave me time to go study, to, to build, build back the, okay. the foundations. So I studied neuro-linguistics programming, I studied coaching um, professionally, um, and then I also studied the MBIT, which is the understanding of the three brains of the body, the mm -hmm. heart, head and the gut. And all that combined, I then started to move more into working with business owners and then applying the human behaviour aspect. Where did that transition come? I mean, you, you, we talked a lot about enterprise and, and corporate level. And then after, obviously, not retraining, but you know, adding yeah. some skill sets, you've you've shifted to a smaller business sort of operation. How yeah. did that? How did that evolve, or why did that? Where did that adjustment come from? It was fascinating because I actually started to surround myself with more business, small business owners when I moved more into because the you were one. Yeah, because yeah. I were well, yeah. I was one. Yeah. You know, I started to move more into doing my own. Uh, I was just running my own workshops and then I, I started to understand more around small businesses and I could see the, the opportunities in terms of, you know, um, you know human behaviour. Mm. It underpins everything. I saw that they, were, they would literally reach this glass ceiling and they would literally go, okay, you know, at the end of the day, we all know a certain way of being through the system, through the environment, through the experience of what we, what we go through life, right? Yeah. And what I saw, which was a common theme, was they, they, they got to this point of like resistance. And the resistance was the limitation of, can I? Mm. Would I, can I? Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So they came up against themselves. <laughs> it, was fascin it fascinated me. And then the business side of things was around really the planning. Like I got in, immersed myself into how do we actually get them to take action? How, they, how can I plan? to actually, you know, take action and achieve some of these goals mm. and what are they actually trying to achieve? So there was a real gap in that space. So I okay. started to really work with business owners because fundamentally it's the same framework, right? So really understanding what is the why, why, why are you doing what you're doing, who are you doing it for and how are we going to do this? Get clear on that. So. I mean, when you when you talk about the the whys, I mean, the corporates and the enterprises mm. all sort of have their whys, and I yeah. I don't know how sort of attached any one person or any group of people yeah. really are towards those. Mm. Where did you 
Where did you start to bring that in with, with the smaller businesses? And like, how did, how did you, you bring that transition through? Because I, I gather there was probably some amazing stuff that you learned in the enterprise corporate space that yeah. you could adapt for the small business and sure. give them skills because often they, you know, they're not well-rounded when they walk straight out and start a business out. That's they right. need to yeah. pick things. But where did the infusion of the sort of mission and, and purpose and values come in for you? For me and my business, or well, for more of them? I get well. If it was for you and your business, then yeah. sure, and mm. I, I can understand how that would happen, and then you sure. push that outwards, or, or is it something that you just witnessed and, and realised this is what small businesses needed and, and wanted? You know, the, the biggest. This is what I saw um, in businesses, and maybe because I, I experienced being part of some, you know, some business education groups myself, mm-hmm. and being through the journey myself, I, I started to realise that I, you know, I knew. The fundamentals of what was going on, but what I realised that the, the the gap was is there was real no there's really no connection to why we were doing what we were doing. So there yeah. was no purpose or value alignment mm-hmm. first of all, yeah. and then there was actually no planning. It was literally go out and do it and see if it works. And keep trying and just it keep was, doing it. Yeah, just keep doing and, and just it was keep doing. so <laughs> it was really fascinating. So I implemented that. Yeah. That was the first thing. I knew that people had a product or a service. And I've worked now with a number of businesses and the, key, the, the, the gap in, in what I identified was that there was really, there was, it's getting congruent with why they were doing what they were doing mm-hmm. and what is the purpose of that and why, and if you look at the long term, what is that going to give you? Mm-hmm. And getting that alignment really allowed people to go, okay, so when I, when I hit those shit times and I have the lulls, at least I know there's, the lulls will come, but yeah. I know there's a grander reason and purpose why. So I really started to work with business owners, um, you know, last couple of years to get that alignment happening, that congruency within, within them using the behavioural techniques and modelling that I've used. And then it was the planning. It's like, okay, so how do we then take action? Because in the world of entrepreneurship and, and small businesses, you know, there's a real, there's a real, um, to be a true entrepreneur, mm. it's about stepping into a place where you, you have that, the emotional intelligence, you have those skill sets, and you actually, you're nimble in a way that to take risks, to actually move through those times. Mm. And when you're taking people from an environment where, you know, we've got a, a, a large a number of people who don't want to do, who don't want to be in a corporate environment for whatever their reasons are. Yeah. But it's really interesting how you, it's, it's not as easy to adapt to the small business life. Oh, it's, a, it's I mean, <laughs> the adapting security, is crazy. I mean, look, yeah, so I'm ex-corporate you know? too. And the, mm. and the amount of people I know still in that space that are, uh, you know, I, I think they struggle. They, they, there's some good things that they've got too. And I think they struggle to be grateful for some of those. But on the, they just they could not tolerate. And I get told often, we just could not tolerate that, the risk Yes. The uncertainty, yes. um, you know, even just the initial minor risk of seed capital yeah. type money to start things, That's little, right. and, and yeah. because they, they've never been in a situation. Mm. I, I, my personal experience around that is, is you actually can build up that resilience over time and just oh, get yeah. more and more used to dealing with more and more risk yeah. and and um, and yeah, more and more responsibilities for more and more people and, right. and and all those types of things as well because. The funny thing is with the small businesses, you end up walking out and paying many people's mortgages instead of just yours and, and otherwise. So, yeah. But yeah, there's, there's so many people I find in that corporate space that uh, look and, and think the grass is greener, um, but, but just don't, or not willing to grow into the yeah. space that allows them to sort of take some of those risks and, and make some real changes in their life. Totally. And I think, you know, if anyone's considering and going and starting a business of their own, I, I would certainly do, this is the first, if people have come to me and said, I want to start a business, I said, great, what is it that you want to do? I want to do, you know, X, Y, Z. And I said, awesome. The first thing I would absolutely recommend for anyone who wants to, to, to get out there is just start a, start a side hustle. Keep in the job that you're in, Get, have the foundation that you've got. So give yourself that stability. Don't go quit your job tomorrow and start the side hustle. It just, it, your system, in terms of your body, your belief system and everything, it will, it will just collapse. Because mm. it's not, it won't calibrate quick enough. Well, um, that's not how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, but yeah. for the majority, yeah. I would certainly suggest start a high side hustle or go work in, an, in, a, in a space where you can learn from the inside 
you can be more aligned to where you want to be. I agree, actually. I think that's a really valid point. Yeah. And something that, that I really like that because it's something that's not talked about much. I mean, you've, you're in a corporate job, for example, and okay, it's a big leap. The side hustle is a really good option and something yeah. to test the waters. But the other option, which really doesn't get talked about, is okay, get rid of that job drop a little bit of income most likely yeah. and go sit behind a, a small four or five business a four or five person yep. business and entrepreneur and and see get yourself close but not right at the Correct. right at the tip of the spear and, and see if you can really handle it you've still got an income you've yep. still got some risk but nowhere near the same risk that's that right. you would you know have by jumping out and starting yourself totally so that's a really good point yeah and I think through that experience what you then you start to realize is you know you, you the reality is, if you're not happy in a, and this is what I've seen as well in the work that I've done, um, it doesn't matter if you're in a corporate work or you work at a cafe or you work, you know, down, you know, at the shops or wherever you're going to work. If you're not happy within yourself, it doesn't matter what you do, you, you will take yourself with you, right? <laughs> so ultimately, work on yourself. Find out what lights you up. Go start doing some hobbies, work, through, you know, do some um, work experience or just offer some volunteer work or whatever it might be. Work out what it is. Is it, is it within you that's, that you need to transform or transcend some stuff within you to allow you to be in a more happier space? Or is it that, is it that you really want to be in a space where you can be more aligned to your values and to what you want to be doing, you yeah. know, to, which, which is aligned to your purpose? So, so just have, that, have, a, have a check on that. Yeah. So, so on that, sort of, what what is your your vision and purpose, and how do you how do you sort of articulate that? Me. Yeah. Look, I think um, f I feel it, it's really interesting because my initial what, what's coming to light more and more is um, I absolutely want to support and teach and educate business owners um, to step into the realness of who they are. Mm and to, to, to actually achieve success and design a life by design, which is why I joined the Game Changers, right? Because there's a very much an alignment of what I've been doing and what they've been doing. And I also have a very much a passion in being able to teach and educate and um, almost showcase a lot of the mentors that I've used and what's actually possible and what's out there yeah. for people to tap into mm -hmm. to help them through the journey that they're in. So for me, it's about, you know, we are all humans, but we actually don't know about who we are and how we operate. Yeah. And we need to be able to educate more about that. So for me, it's about helping people <laughs> transcend and to, to, to step into the, to, to the truth of who they are. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I, I've moved through a few different businesses and been in, in business, so to speak, for, mm. for about a 10 year period. Mm. And there's just, this, whether I was missing it or otherwise, but there's just so much more available now yeah. in terms of um, whether it's just education, whether it's coaching, um, just general support groups. I mean, obviously social media totally. has actually, on the, on the community side of things, really created the opportunity because it, it's, um, it's a very, it certainly for me, it was a very isolating space early on, mm. and I still think it's a very isolating situation. Totally, yeah. However, there's just so much more access to so yeah. many more like-minded people available now. And obviously you're providing a big part of that mm. and uh, you know, education and support to, to all these people. So that's awesome. But I'm gonna change pace a little bit. Yeah. And um, so you know, what's something that uh, your family and friends might say about you that generally <laughs> the, uh, the average <laughs> coaching client or person in your professional uh, community <laughs> might not know about? <laughs> oh. You know, um, I'm a big fan of asking for feedback. Okay. I learned that a while ago from a mentor of mine is, if you meet someone new, ask feedback. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just curious, you know, what is it about me that, you know, that you, what was your first impression? Because I always liked that. My friends and family would probably say that um, I'm probably, I, I give a lot. I, I care and, I, and I, I'm a very, I, I, I have utmost, I have no judgment for people. Mm. Um, I'm supportive and um, I'm always looking for the bit to, to, to see people succeed in what okay. they do. So I'm very much a fun-loving, 
person. Yeah. Um, on the flip side, um, I can to my family, maybe my brother and stuff like that. Oh, it's, <laughs> well, I'm not sure if you're dodging the question here, but I'm just looking for some quirky hobby or something. Oh, you know, quirky like, hobby? What's something, what's something people don't really oh, don't know, know about, about me? <laughs> wow, okay. That's a really good question. Um, I like to sing. Um, really? Yeah, I like to dance. And um, I love to sit. <laughs> one of my favourite things to do is to lay under a tree. <laughs> and sing and dance? <laughs> yeah, if I have a drink or so, like maybe I'll take a microphone of someone. But um... <laughs> <laughs> So you lay under a tree. And yeah. I mean, that, that might sort of lead into my next line of questioning. But yeah. laying under a tree, is that, is that you sort of talking down a meditative practice right now, just like enjoying being grateful out there in nature or just there's something about trees that you just I like just, to lay under? Yeah, look, I, um, I've learned really quick, I learned a long time ago that I have to ground myself a lot. Yeah. And people may, people may not know this about me, I'm a bit of a lark and I like to have fun and I love that. people. <laughs> Um, but I'm actually quite an introvert as well. Yeah. Like I like my space. I like to just be, and I like to ground myself. And laying under a tree, that's probably the closest I can get to the ground. Yeah, that's. But actually you know, really I'm just really quite. Um, I just lay and I just observe, and I actually, it's not meditation. I don't, you know, it's the gratitude and things. That always is something that I tap into. But I, I actually tap into more of my senses. How mm -hmm. far can I hear? Out, okay. Like what can I hear? Out, so and it sort of I, is I a bit of a personal body. space yeah. that you're sort of moving into. And I'm, I'm, yeah. that's really interesting because I actually identify myself that way. Yeah. Like I really enjoy people and groups, yeah. um, but I find that that's actually an energy draining situation for yeah. me. And uh, although that's how I want to live, I then sort of need to go away and sit by myself for a little yeah. while or um, ground, you know, allow myself that space to actually recalibrate and... Whereas I know a lot of people who love to be out in front of a lot of people and talking and jumping around, and that's actually what gives them more energy. So yeah, it's we're obviously it? very similar in, yeah. that, in that sort of track, yeah. which is really quite interesting. So do you have, what's well, sort of two questions in one, but do you have a morning routine and, and how does a normal week look like? How, how do you structure a week? Yeah, cool. Um, look, I, um, my morning routine is I pretty much, when I wake up in the morning, um, I have alarm set for when I wake up. Um, I do a time where my, my alarm will go off. It's a very pretty sound yeah. as I wake up. I feel like I'm like, you know, <laughs> morning. <laughs> um, yeah, I wake up. It's not up. Jackson 5 or no, anything. No, 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 it's definitely not. Um, <laughs> I wake up and I essentially, I, I just stop and breathe. And I just connect and I literally say thank you for today in my mind and I, I can see the light or whatever because I truly believe that it's very, it's a privilege to wake up every day. Um, yeah. And I think that that's something that I'm very, very honoured and um, to have. So I say thank you for the day. And then for me, I just really just take a few deep breaths and connect. Um, I typically uh, want to be able to, I, I typically just then go and go, what's my intention? So I set three intentions of who I want to be today. Yeah. And um, then I essentially, I get up and I do my, my what I got to do. And I don't listen to radio, I don't watch TV, okay. so I don't pop that on at all. Yep. I actually put on some type of Abraham Hicks or some type of motivational thing in the right. background. Okay. And I listen. Every morning? Mostly yeah. okay. I do that or put some music on or something like that yeah. just to fill myself up with some information or just to listen to something inspiring. And I just feel like I'm constantly calibrating um, into that the more clearer and cleaner that I am within myself, the, the, that's the better work that I do. Okay. So I really um, allow myself to do that. And then essentially I, um, I, get, I take myself off for my day or whatever that is. Yeah. And again, I don't listen to, it really sounds really weird, but I don't listen to the radio. I listen to podcasts, I listen oh, it's to- That's not that weird, that's all I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> People, weird, well, weird, we're, no, no. Well, we're like minded, right? No, Sorry, no, you, no your audience. <laughs> <laughs> now, anyone, yeah, anyone like, listening to this, podcast yeah, may be interested in the podcast as well yeah. uh, you know but um yeah uh, look i, I totally I, yeah it's not i mean it's certainly not weird and i think it's something that's picking up a lot more yeah um and and there's a i mean obviously sometimes the radio's on and those types mm. of things but you know it's it's something that's more and more common with anyone that i sort of 
very broadly put into sort of having a growth mindset. Absolutely. And yeah. Um, yeah, you just want to want to fill yourself with more information, knowledge, or even yeah. just reaffirming, you know, sort of other things that you may have learned in the past. So that's yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't cool. put that in the weird category. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I think what's really important is I move. I get to you know I, I, I typically do bo- like with boxing or yoga okay. or things like that. So I try and try and move my body as much as I can in the morning. Um, but yeah, and then I basically in the car, and sometimes I just go in silence and I just mm. connect and yeah, it's well, just really we, we are a little like. I know, <laughs> yeah, oh really? That's really cool. Yeah, yeah that is interesting. Yeah, 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 I just don't, I just really connect and I listen. I, yeah. I've really been learning to listen more and more and it's been really good actually. Yeah. I'm getting that, who am I? I'm still always getting to know who I am. Yeah. It's fascinating. Like It's a fascinating question. I mean, uh, yeah. do we ever really have an who, answer for that? I am what I am. Yeah. I am who I am. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But no, I, I've, I'm listening more to my intuition. I'm trying to okay. cut out the sound, yeah. dull out the noise and really listen to what is it that is my, the voice within myself. What's it saying? Yeah. And let's just have a chat to the little girl inside of me and see if she's okay. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So you brought up podcasts, so uh, it's a perfect in for me to ask, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm always searching for new ones and, and things like that. So do you have a, you know, do you have a couple of favorite podcasts, either all time or something you're just listening to at the moment and or sort of books, which you think are quite powerful that might be oh, yeah. worth mentioning here? <sighs> Um, I'm really bad with like titles and names yeah, and things okay. like that. So I'm listening to one. I listen to um, uh, Abraham Hicks a okay. bit. So yeah. that's really cool. Um, I'm listening to um, one called uh, what's the one I'm doing at the moment? It's it's probably a bit spiritual, but it's it's really about. Um, I'm really terrible with names, I'm sorry. It's okay, we'll, we'll link it underneath. So if you just talk about it close enough, we'll, we'll work it oh, out Oh, okay, after, yeah. yeah, sweet. Um, what it is, is um, it's on my phone. I've got the list on my phone, if I can get my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, uh, Barry actually suggested it to me, and it's okay. really, really cool. And it, it, it goes a bit spiritual, but what it really allows you to do is to realise... It's all about vibrations of who are you, who you are, okay. and it's about being in an alignment of that vibration of who you are. And when you're um, in that alignment, you almost are opening up the opportunities and the channels to be able to, you know, to really just uh, to step into some of those things. So um, it is. There's so much on the podcast, um, and I'll give you some insight onto. Some books. Rocket Fuel is one that I've looked at. Oh, here we go. Rocket Fuel. Yeah. So if you are, what's really great about this book is um, it's an audio and it really helps you understand the difference between a creator mm-hmm. and an integrator yeah. and what the roles are. And I think that's what's really fascinating, being able to work alongside Barry. You know, I'm a creator, which is interesting, but I also have the integrator type uh, skill set. So that's Rocket Fuel is a really great book if you really want to know as a business owner for you to be the creator and to, to actually own that, which is in your highest values for who you are. Find yourself an integrator and find someone who can actually do the integration part of a business, which is the actually doing part of the business. So that's a really great book. I'm going to have to read that uh, because yeah. a lot of people have said that book, you know, and have given me that title yeah. recently. It so. is actually quite good. Yeah. Um, I'm a true believer that um, very quickly if you're in business, find out what you're good at and just stick to that. I know that a lot of the time it's, it all comes down to money and time, right? But do what you're good at and do that 80% of the time. Yeah. Don't if, if you spend your energy on that 80% of the time and generate the revenue and generate the, the, the progress and the momentum from that space, Joint venture, find someone who can come in or an intern or something that will come, someone who will come in and do that other part, yeah. the integrated part role, whatever it is, that will allow you the freedom and the space to do what you do really well. So that's a fantastic book. Awesome. The other book I would say to, to read um, when it's an audio is The Game of Life and How to Play It. Okay. Um, that's a really great book. Um, it literally talks you through um, <laughs> the game of life. How do you actually... It's all vibrational, so it talks to you about your vibrations, your mindset, what you say, 
what what you what actually shows up. And probably the last one I um, am going to, looking is "Addicted to Success" by John Assaroff. So yeah. that's another one that I'm. Awesome. Going on Some to. really great books there, and there's yeah, yeah. a couple there that I've, I've heard of but not actually read. So. Yeah. I'll definitely have to dig in. So yeah. that's that's really cool. So we'll just do a couple of quick questions and, and yeah. just get ready to close. So the first one is, you know, what's your do you would you have one tip for people that are really looking to amplify and grow their business? What's the one thing that you think they should either implement or consider um, or, or get serious about to, mm. to start to grow their business? Yeah, this is a really interesting it depends on which stage of business they're at. Sure. But if I was to say anything, um, understand your niche, like really get what underpins everything. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you can't market your business and attract people to your offer, your product or your service, um, and you do that to the right audience, that's if you can get really laser focused on that yeah. and then you can learn or find someone to put them on to to get it on the platform, social media, all that. But what underpins everything at the moment is getting your message, getting your offer, service, or product in front of the right people. So really get to know your niche. If you know that and you're bringing generating business into your in you know and you're getting the right clients. Um, Systemize a business. The rest is just t- tactics, right? I mean, if you know what you're doing and who you're actually targeting, that's it. Which, um, thank you very much for leading that straight into you know what I love to practice and, yeah. and preach as well. But that's that's exactly right. I mean, yeah. and and I, you probably see have the same opinion. I would I would suspect from that point is that mm. you see so many people that are really hustling, but they really haven't nailed down their niche. And I'm not sure you can ever really absolutely nail it. I think no. you constantly keep totally. yeah. seeking that, that you know continual niching down of, of where mm. you stand. And it's amazing the results once you can get closer. Yeah. yeah. I probably would say as well is, um, and you're right, you're never going to, you can't be every, I suppose the key point is this, don't be everything to everybody. Yeah. Like just find a, find a tribe, right? And find out where they hang out and find out who they know and you know whatever that is the other thing I would set I would seriously suggest is use really understand the language that they use if I was to it's like when you go buy a car for the first time right as soon as you buy the car you see the car everywhere it comes into your filters the yellow car right the yellow car (laughs) same thing as language yeah so we we are all like-minded because we talk the same talk your clients and your customers, if you go out there with a marketing campaign because you, you're pitching it or your language you're using is what you think is what they want to hear, it, and if you don't understand the language, then try and hit the mark more about the words and what they say. The best thing to do is to, you can do a number of few things, go survey your customers, um, go look to see what are they saying. So in the pain point, what are they saying? So they might be, I'm sick and tired of this. I feel angry or anxious when this happens, or whatever it might be. If if that's the language that they're using, yeah. use that language because human, human behaviour um, tells us it. They will they hear that, and that actually hits more home to them because they're using that language. Then, you, when you go into the solution mode of what's off, what's available, um, it will you know you, you probably your conversion rates would be a lot higher. Amazing. Well, listen, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Um, where, if people want to find out a bit more about you or, yeah, totally. or the Game Changers, uh, where should they go? How can they connect? Sure, you can go to LinkedIn, um, which is my LinkedIn page, and you can find Marcel Audesho, it's spelled M-A-R-C-I-E-L-A-U-D-E-S-H-O, um, or you can go to thegamechangers.com.au if you want to check out the Game Changers. And other than that, um, I'm sure you'll find me on Facebook and Instagram as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I'm very, very pleased to have you on board. And that was an amazing conversation. And I'm, I'm really you. glad that we've managed to record that. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much. And um, for everyone listening, definitely check out the, uh, the books and recommendations yeah. from that. Um, and if you want to reach out to Marcel, I'm sure she'd, she'd love to hear from you. So thank you very much. And this has been uh, Matt Hannum and the Amplify Your Business podcast. And I think we might squeeze another couple of uh, Lombok special Game Changer uh, Game Changer Week uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll get another couple of podcasts in. We've got another couple of guests coming, so look forward to those coming soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Hey, guys, it's Matt here, and thanks so much for listening to the Amplify Your Business podcast. It means the world to me that you've listened all the way through, and I'd love it if you could share it with your friends, if you want to.